could see it working out. Yeah, just, I mean. There's not that much removal in this deck. Exactly. Like, at all. Is there any? Um, uh, well, that's, <laughs> that's <yeah>. complicated. <laughs> Uh, so Look. there is Vrasco Golgari Look. Queen, which does pick off smaller creatures. Um, it takes a minute, Look. though. Look, playing removal spells gets in the way of doing the fun things I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Merfolk Branch Rocker from Pete. It's something that I find frequently in decks. You know, I have all these cool things, and I'm just, like, struggling to get my deck down to 60 cards. And then someone tells me I need to put in removal for my opponent's deck. And I just, I'm way off that. You're just like, oh, no. No, no, no. no. We have, where would I find the room? Cast Down is not a cool <laughs> magic card. Massacre Girl placed in the graveyard for Pete. And it looks like we have Fanatical Firebrand shooting damage. That's so, so light up. The stage can be cast. Exiling. Fireblade Artist and Skewer the Critics for Tom. And Skewer is going to shoot down the Branch Walker. So Fireblade Artist still around. We're counting right now. Mana cost of creatures in the graveyard. So we have seven for Pete. Eight if you count the fanatical firebrand. Eight for the firebrand. You got to get up to six mana. That like, seems to be key. That's not nothing, but Tom doesn't exactly have anything on the battlefield right now. That fireblade artist still has to get cast. Yeah. Wild Growth Walker for Pete. That's going to demand an answer. And I kind of like... I want to talk about the timing of this play. Because it's likely that Tom has an answer for the walker, but... He may not, if he wants to answer it, it means that likely that that Fireblade Artist is going to remain in exile for the game. So Pete making a really good tempo play here. Yeah, absolutely. This is the kind of thing where you're effectively forcing Pete to just, th or excuse Tom me, to throw, Tom away to just yeah. throw away a card. Yeah, see, Lightning Strike from Tom's hand. And then the artist has to be exiled. Great play on Pete's side. Yep, absolutely. And he has a Teferi, time, the Time Raveler. Really like just cycling here. All Pete wants to be trying yeah. to do is hitting his land drops. And if Tom points a, d a burn spell at this Teferi, that's a win in Pete's book. Yeah. Just draws a card. I mean, Pete's whole deck to me, correct me if I'm wrong here, feels like the name of the game is get make it, make it to six mana without dying, which he's doing a great job of right now. Right. And, you know, there's even a point where you need to get to six mana and still have life left over to play with. Because the front half of Command the Dreadhorde, even if Wild Growth Walker is going to gain you life, you got to pay some up front to do it. Gutter Bones was the other play here. For Pete, it's another Teferi that will unsummon the Gutter Bones and draw him a card. Four Time Ravelers and one Hero of Dominaria for Pete, really favoring the cheaper Planeswalker. And there is a point where Pete does also have to find the namesake. Command he the Dreadhorde, to right. The Command the Dreadhorde. Can the deck really win without it? Can it just play a fair game, or are we really. Oh, is this comboing? There's certainly a point where you can just play your cards, right? Massacre Girl's a strong card, the Wild Growth Walker package wins games, and so on. But ideally, your Command the Dreadhorde is what puts right. games out of reach. So we had a, an attack there from the Firebrand. Light up the stage is two cards, which is a land and then cast Spawn of Mayhem. Uh, and it looks like we have hanging out Dreadhorde Butcher. Spun here aggressively costed. Yeah, absolutely. This is just something that Pete needs to yeah. answer very quickly, and his deck isn't very well equipped to do so. Yeah, fortunately still at 20 life, so it's spawned just a, just a beater for right now. That's true, but if Pete doesn't do something here, you know, between the trigger, the fanatical firebrand, and the spawn, that's six damage, yeah. which represents six mana of cards that let fewer that Pete will be bringing back. Yeah, Pete w would like to find a payoff here because he is this kind of combo and Planeswalker finish. You know, there aren't just sweepers. There's not going to be a find finality or anything like that here. Exactly. But if he does have it, he's only going to have to pay 13 life to and get everything back. All right, and he does. So here's Command the Dreadhorde. We were talking about it earlier. earlier. So we have two, four, seven, it looks like eight mana worth of cards back into play. He's going to also gain three life off the Merfolk Branch Walker. So he'll lose five, get all four of the creatures. He gets a counter on the Wild Growth Walker, and he's going to explore and put a land into his hand. Not a bad turn, all things said. 
No, absolutely. You know, the three life that he gains there is going to make up a lot of the damage being done. And now we're going to get to see an unsummon on this spawn right. as well. So Spawn Man back into Tom's hand. Pete drawing another card. That was off his new Teferi. Excuse me, it's a repulse. Okay. That's my fault. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> And use Fanatical Firebrand to take care of Tom's Firebrand. Board is clear. Pete with plenty of cards in hand. Uh, Dreadhorde Butcher. This is the last turn for Tom to cast it if he wants to. It's a lot to ask on this board. It's not doing too much. And really, we're seeing a lot of the strength of the th the three mana Teferi here, the Time yeah. Rattler. Just because that card has put Pete so far ahead because it's forcing Tom to make such awkward plays. Dreadhorde Butcher attacks in, just as a 1-1 one, one right now, and I like this a lot from Pete. He kind of can smell that, hey, putting one damage on his 2-4 might mean he'll lose the creature, so he's actually just going to trade it with his 2-1. Right, you know, eventually you're going to have to deal with the Dreadhorde Butcher. Just, do you want to take damage beforehand or not? Dreadhorde Butcher dies, a damage is dealt, and he'll use that to finish off Teferi. Gutter Bones cast from Tom's hand. Board's still pretty clean. Here's an anti-aggro card. Absolutely. Soaring Vengeful, Soarin Vengeful Bloodlord. And Merfolk Branchwalker. And it's just all about life gain here. It's an re Soren reanimates it. So three more life. Pete back up to 15. A 3-5 Wild Growth Walker now. And he might be even higher on life. You see to ferry again on summoning a creature and attack in that creature has lifelink Pete will be back up to 18 see and this is the spot where command the dread horde doesn't even have to be that flashy and over the top to win we saw it quote yeah unquote, it was still four for one back exactly four cards and now the game is just out of reach and tom gonna pick up the card so pete ingram's four color dread horde does get the job done he's up one zero here and based on how that game looks out there's I feel like there's just a lot of pressure on Tom to, to put more on the board early than happened that game. Right, and you know, something I kind of want to point out here from the Dread Horde side of things is Pete had a wild growth walker that stuck around. Yeah. And that's sort of the name of the game. You know, it got hit with a lightning strike, but it wasn't in time to stop anything like coming in the Dread Horde from bringing it back and well, so on. So without pressure, that interaction just isn't going to be as effective. Yeah, well, what, what I like is that, so Tom's start at the beginning was a uh, fanatical firebrand light up the stage start. Good in some matchups, kind of weak here. And then the first Wild Growth Walker got removed, but it it was still a two for one because there was that Fireblade artist that never got to be cast. Right. It, it just... It just prolonged the game. It was the end of turn three, and no one had anything in play. And I just don't think we can see a board like that and have for Tom to have a good chance of winning. Right. And there was a point where if Tom had had a third land uh, on that on that light up the stage turn, he could have cast the Fireblade Artist, attacked, and then if the Wild Growth Walker blocks, he can shoot it with like a Fanatical Firebrand, or if it doesn't, shoot it with a Skewer of the Critics. But missing that land drop was just so key there, and that's one of the problems of playing these low land aggro decks, is you do still need to hit your third land in order to come out ahead of your opponent early. Now you said you were to been talking about the four color Dread Horde deck. If you want to get all the opinions here from people over, from some of the players here on the SCG Tour, make sure you're subscribed to us on our website at Premium, the Star City Games Premium. Uh, you get exclusive, you get instant access to these, um, to articles about the current format. Uh, you also get ad-free, and you get a discount on purchases from the store at starcitygames.com slash premium. Go to starcitygames.com. You can put, you can leave <laughs> that part out. You can put some W's in front of it. I'm just reading the ad. Okay, okay. Good. We're a team. We'll get through this together. Here, I'll say go dot, and you can say the rest. All right, all right. All I right. Think that'll work. That'll work. Check it out at go dot. Starcitygames.com slash premium. Yeah, team For, Forward slash premium. This was, that was character <laughs> development. I liked that. That was good. <laughs> Let's look at the sideboard here on Tom's side. Um, five cards. I don't know how many of them, how to attack this Thread Horde deck. I recommend starting with Duress. Duress. Okay, I was going to say, there's enough non-creature spells here. That duress seems good. Now, you could still get punked out by a wild growth walker. That's true. Uh, you don't really want to dilute what your deck is doing too often. Yeah. Much. I don't want to go for lava coils. That's just too. That's like all they'd hit, right? I mean, I guess they exile, right? Lava coil exiles, which yeah. means you can't command it back. Lava coil's not completely hideous. Uh, there is a point where shock is a little underwhelming against something like four color dread horde where you yeah. just want to get it out of your deck. There aren't a bunch of targets. You know, being able to tag a planeswalker that's minus. 
is nice because it kills the planeswalker, I guess. Yeah, shock. I think shock for duress. Uh, I'm in, into that. Exactly. Can we make room for lava coil or? I don't know. Yeah, the other thing that you could possibly be looking at is something like Spawn of Mayhem, just because it costs a bunch of mana and it lines up so poorly against Teferi and Vraska Golgari. Or not Vraska, excuse me, it has a converted mana cost of four. Yeah, you can but, get wrong. It really does match up poorly against those four Teferis. Uh, I guess against the rest of the deck, because he's light on removal, a like a fly, you know, a planeswalker deck with very with low removal. I, I like an undercosted flyer against. Mm -hmm. You know, if he doesn't have the Teferi, I think Spawn's a great card for the matchup. Sure, and I I think it is a little bit back and forth because you have to look at what you expect Pete to be bringing in, and drawing multiple right. copies of Spawn can be pretty awkward. So he couldn't even even look into hedging between the two. So looking at what Pete might bring in, his sideboards, Dress Cast Down, The Elder Spell, Crowl Harpooner, Thrashing Brontodon, Cry of the Carnarium, Finale of Eternity, and Hostage Taker. You know, he, he has some more creatures, I think, that he can go toward if he wants to, you know, to try to block with them, but maybe just removal, Cast Down's probably good here. Yeah, Cast Down and Cry of the Carnarium are the two yeah. cards that stick out for me, especially when you see something like Dread Horde Butcher, Cry of the Carnarium could be an all-star. Yeah, are you going to go as far, when you talk about removal, does Hostage Shaker make the cut then too? That one's a little bit more awkward against the red deck specifically, just because they have so many ways to answer it, and it costs so much mana for what may end up being not that much upside. I'm not particularly interested in diluting our deck that much, but there are certainly some cards like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, that just aren't particularly attractive here. Oh man, I would never want to cut that from my deck. I'm sure. I, <laughs> I don't want that to be the right answer. That's um, Paradise Druid, because the cards like Fanatical Firebrand exist, can be rough. Hey now, it's hexproof. Oh right, oh right, you never sure mind, of. it's great. Yeah. Look, it is... Um, Hexproof once. <laughs> yeah. You can ramp with it once. once. Look, why people play Lotus Petal in Legacy, why would you not play it in Standard? I, I can't think of a reason. <laughs> well, keep thinking. Get It'll be really TV. good in Standard. I'd like it with Dread Horde. Yeah, it's a lot of good things you could do with Lotus Petal. Yeah, it would be perfect in the four-color Dread Horde deck. Why do you think people No, I was going to say, it? actually, you know, Dread Horde Butcher would be good with Lotus Petal, too. <laughs> That's fun. Turn one, yeah, Dread Horde Butcher, go. All right, Lotus Petal, Pitcher. Dread Horde, Tribal. Write yeah, it down. All right, all right, I can do that. I'm sure that's the most broken thing you can do with Lotus Petal. There, there must not be anything better. What? No. Obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> the dre it's the whole Dread Horde. Players here, second game. Tom will be on the play. You know, I saw a Linkin Park music yeah. video about how powerful the Dread Horde is. Do they talk? That's not okay. So, so here's the thing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know this. This, I want to run with this one, but I don't know Linkin Park. Well, but you can, ta we can keep going, and I'll, I'll, I'll go along with it's, it. It's the War of the Spark trailer, Matthias. They use the the Linkin Park song in the end, but like a soft version of it that like gets real powerful and Liliana like okay, okay. quacks at the end or something. Like I don't I don't know. But this is like one of those emo things. Back to the magic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Merfolk Brad Merfolk Bradgewalker is a play. Uh Dreadhorde Butcher connected that turd. And we'll clear the way. There is our lava coils that have come in and it'll exile away the Merfolk. Yeah the the Upside of being able to just permanently deal with a wild growth walker is so high with Lava Coil. There's a point where you just need to check certain boxes when trying to answer cards. Jade Light Ranger shows Tamio no, and a land. But Gutterbones to follow up. Dreadhorde Butcher, man, talk about a card that feels so different to play versus draw. Yeah, you know, right there, Pete did not have the option to cry of a Carnarium, and he would have on the Oh, play. yeah. Here's Judith. Swing in. He can trade away the Jade Light Ranger. Most of his ways back in this game likely involve doing that. Yeah. So it'll be a trade. It'll be th three off the Gutter Bones and then four off the Butcher. That's Three off Gutter Bones, four, four off, off Butcher, butcher. Yeah, that's... and then the fifth off the Judith. Yes, so... So that's eight. That's going to drop Pete down to seven. And if that's one way to turn off the Command the Dreadhorde outs. Yep, exactly. You just kill them. Yeah, do you taking care of their life total. 
Both players bring it out. We counted it as eight damage. I believe that's correct. So it's four from the Butcher, one from Judith, yep. which is a total of five, plus three from Gutter Bones is and eight. They have that written down too. Yep, seven. Yeah. Yeah, Shang Jedi or Butcher, yeah, it was a four three when it died, thanks to Judith, so it does shoot for four. Back over to Pete we go. A full grip of cards. Yeah, the issue here is not card advantage. Uh, in yeah, court it's, BGs, the, yeah. it's uh, staying alive. It's the red card advantage, right? Every card that they lose the game, at the end of the game, every card that's still in their hand was card advantage. Exactly. Jade Light Ranger here from Pete draws him two more lands. Has to discard one of them. Back to Tom we go. There is a point where if Ingram can stabilize, these beacons are a way to recoup yeah. life, even without a wild growth walker. Looks like there's another Dreadhorde Butcher in Tom's hand. I don't mind just swinging it in there. Oh, yeah. Come on and slam. Welcome to the jam. Instead, he's going to... Oh, this is a neat play. Ooh. Judith, legend, legend ruling the Judith, die, when it hits the graveyard, a damage is dealt. It takes care of the blocker. So then five damage in Pete down to two. That was really nice. Building a forked bolt. Five mana. Massacre girl. That'll clean up the board. But dealing it... Dealing yep. a damage, dealing a damage. Tom says send him both upstairs. Pete was at two, now he's at zero. I like that he makes Tom do it, just to make sure it happens. Yeah, there's certainly a point where you just kind of got to go, well, maybe they miss it. Yeah. Two triggers there. So, on to game three, we will go. Uh, Dreadhorde Butcher looking mighty strong that game. Game three is going to be, I think, just tougher, though, because that kind of runaway Dreadhorde Butcher draw can't really happen when you're going second. Yeah, that is so much harder on the draw, just yeah. particularly, you know, brought up Car Cry of the Cardarium. That card is so much different on the play than it is on the draw when things like Dreadhorde Butcher get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think we actually saw any sideboard out of Ingram yet. Not for that No, game. I think I saw Hostage Taker hiding out in his hand, which okay. is possible that it's something where he just wants to play as many things that interact on the battlefield as possible. Yeah. Uh, what we likely saw come out of Medvik's deck was Fanatical Firebrand. If you're expecting the Explore package to be clogging up the battlefield and Ingram to be better at interacting in the early turns of the game, Firebrand's just honestly, honestly kind of an underwhelming card. There's also the angle where it even gets the Massacre Girl quote-unquote chain started. Oh, I do like that part. I have found with Massacre Girl that in general, it just always wipes the board. I don't have to work for it that much, or do you feel like you gotta... It's a little tough. There's a point okay. where if all your stuff has two toughness, the card's embarrassing. Then it doesn't... You're right. You're right. If there's no X1, there you is, can't get it started. There is a one-two punch. This is a little anecdotal, but stay okay. with me. No, no, no. Go uh, for it. The one-two punch is turn four, Vraska, Queen of the Golgari, roll up, don't sacrifice anything. Okay. Turn five... If all they ever X twos, Massacre Girl, trigger, roll up Vraska, sacrifice your Massacre Girl, and the trigger is an until end of turn effect. So then sure. it sees your Massacre Girl die, which then starts the chain and wipes the battle. So who is killing the creatures then? Um, Vraska? Vraska's Why an Vraska assassin the, too. Okay. Right, who's massacring everything if Massacre Girl's gone? Uh, look, all I'm I saying, don't know. I'm just saying I don't see how that would work. You don't end up that deep as a participant in the cult Rakdos without being able to ch beat death sometimes. All right, I can buy that. <laughs> I'm I, just need, I need to make sure this checks out. I'm Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> look, you can you can put the magnifying glass away, Matthias. <laughs> <laughs> Massacre girl can't melt steel beams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, on Pete's side, it's... Yeah, I... The matchup seems fine. I mean, what I like about what's going on with his deck is that he has this card, um, Wild Growth Walker, which really demands an answer out of Tom's deck. But at the same time, it's like his only creature. So Tom has to bring in things like Lava Coil against a deck that's full of Planeswalkers. I like the pressure it's doing there. Yeah, and there's even a point where Tom Sangle may just be hoping that Pete has is incentivized to lean less on those planeswalkers. You know, Pete's yeah. probably trimming some number of his Tomios here. You can't probably. just play a four mana do nothing. It's, it's harder, deck, yeah. Where we did see it in his deck class game. Because you want not zero, but it's really something that ideally you're not choking on. You want it as like a late game thing where you can play it on say turn six, buy back your cast down and cast down something. Keep on Pete's side. Yeah, let's see where the times are Kind of, uh, it looks like he has on a borderline hand. Let's see whether he decides to go with it. And he sends it back. Are there any specific cards you're looking for onto the Rakdos side when you're picking, especially on a draw here for game, you know, your post board, which is usually bad for a red deck, uh, you're on the draw, which is weaker, so are you looking for certain things in your hand? Probably something to the effect of gutter bones plus lava coil plus... So a, a one drop so, plus lava coil. Yeah, let's say one drop lava coil, a couple lands, and then maybe say a duress and a two drop or something. Oof. Okay. But you you don't want you want you need something interactive. Right. You want some sort of interactive piece because ultimately you're a pile of mediumish beatdown cards against a synergy deck. Yeah. And if left alone, the Synergy deck will go over the top of you. So it's kind of your role to try and get them to zero before their Synergies can take over, and that usually involves picking apart one or two Synergies along the way. So you feel like just a straight race between the two decks is not going to go in Tom's favor? No, we kind here. of saw game one, there was a point where Pete just played one card a turn until yeah. turn six, and then all of a sudden, Tom was the game was completely out of reach for Tom. And we're pretty close here. It is Gutter Bones plus Duress plus, plus Fanatical. It's three one-mana spells. There's only one land, though. Gutter Bones, Duress, Fanatical, Firebrand, and then it had Lava Coil. But we'll start with Gutter Bones. His draw is Fireblade Artist. Tom, one, he scribed the bottom and has one more chance at that second land. He still has other plays, oh. but here's Wild Growth Walker. Now he needs it. Does he hit? Does. And, yeah, I oh. think so. Did we? Did we no, know? I we think missed. it was a duress. Swing in here. Okay. I like this attack. It bluffs the shock. You gotta. Even if you boarded out the shocks, you need to do this. Absolutely. Block and Fanatical Firebrand finishes it off. A pricey attack for Tom. Another Wild Growth Walker for Pete. Does he have the land? He does. Blurg. This is, this is not yeah. good on Tom's side. Now Tom hits his land here. Okay. This Blood Crypt is the play. We're not out. Yeah, now, be unfortunately, because he missed the land, he now no, no longer has development. He's just parrying the board, which kind of reminds me of game one. We did this, eventually Pete hit six mana, did something really dumb. Now, fortunately for Tom, there's a Merfolk Branch Walker here, and both Wild Growth Walkers are in the graveyard. Right, and th there is a point here where, you know, if both players are low on resources, that's going to favor the Rakdos deck yeah. as long as Ingram doesn't have a ton of mana. This is interesting. Tom deciding between Fireblade Artist and Duress this turn goes for Duress. Yeah, and seeing how much Ingram has developed, you want to make sure that you're able to go ahead and cash these in before something like Tommy yeah. comes down and turns off your hand disruption. This... And, oh, I love it. A second duress. I was going to say the two Tamios really wipes out the duress, but he had two of them. Takes both copies of Tamio. Yeah, you're just priced into those kinds of plays, Oh, absolutely. Even if they don't feel very good. And the, Ingram is missing white mana yeah. here. The way this game is playing out, right, if a Tamio stuck, that was going to be the game ender. Yeah, absolutely. That's just minus get back Wild Growth Walker. Good yeah. luck. A third duress from Tom, now choosing between Cry the Carnarium and Teferi, he leaves the Teferi, goes back to Pete. Pete doesn't have white mana. Does have, <laughs> well, now he does next the turn. The Lotus Petal. Okay. That is Bar Paradise Druid. 
And this is the downside of playing the black version of the deck instead of the red version, is you don't have something like Goblin Chain Whirler to tag this Paradise Dream. Oh, this would be good against this board? Just a, a Chain Whirler? Here, yeah. this, this whole board of X ones? Yeah, back over Pete we go. He will get to cast a fairy. And can do it anyway. Looks like he picked up the land. Bounces the Fireblade Artist and draws a card. That's one of his interplanar beacons. And that's one of the cards that's going to keep this game just out of reach for Tom. Tom will recast the Artist. They will both attack... I believe at Pete. Yeah, if you're not playing at instant speed, you can just ignore the Teferi for a little bit. And with Pete at this high of a life total, and it, there's just not that much upside to going after Teferi. You need to get Pete in range of death. Whole board trades, no follow-up for Tom. So now both players just making land drops, but Teferi starts to tick up again. Tom has a gutter bones in the graveyard, but I don't know that he has a way to get it back just yet. Looks like Tom might have something to the effect of Lightning Strike in hand and is trying to figure out if he wants to try and get back that Gutter Bones. It is Skewer the Critics, and he just goes and skewers away the Teferi. So no way to get back the Gutter Bones just yet. Ingram, another Interplanar Beacon. Tom does not hit both players trading land drops. Another go here. Who hits first? And this Ooh. is a big hit. Fireblade Arson Ooh. attack, and hey, there's three mana left over. That's enough to bring back Gutter Bones and cast it. Big draw for Tom. And a big oh. draw back for Pete. Cry the Carnarium will answer the Gutter Bones permanently along with the Fireblade Artist. We're back to an even board. And both players just playing off the top. A huge number of lands for Pete. And that's kind of the downside to this Dreadhorde deck is these Explore creatures are only going yeah. to give you lands and card advantage. And you also play like 26 lands. Massacre Girl on an empty board for Pete. It is still a 4-4. Four -four light up the stage from Tom. Spawn of Mayhem and a land. He's not played a land, so he just plays the land and plays the, casts the spawn. Seems right. easy enough. And a damage, and then it's... A, so right now Tom down to 10. Spawn's going to upkeep, send Pete down to 14. Don't believe it gets the 1-1 one, one counter just yet, though. I believe it does. Because it's Tom's at... Life. Because... Oh, either player? It's Tom. If it's... A, oh, it's Tom is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that Pete wanted to hold off... An, there's no way he wanted to hold off an attack, no, was there? No, there's a point where you likely just have to race here, because even a 4-4 four, four is not that much worse than a 5-5. Five, five. Another Gutter Bones brought back, and Lava Coil, and I like this play from Tom. Mm -hmm. It exiles Massacre Girl, ignoring the wa Wild Growth Walker. It's going to be a race, oh and a huge top deck oh for Pete. My it's Jade Light Ranger. It's one of the only plays that would have stopped that, but did we just see in response Lightning Strike on the Wild Growth? Yes. And then Pete picks up the that's cards it. to it, because that's game. Oh, my God. And Tom, a flurry of back and forth at the end, I believe sends Tom Medvek the, to the 2-1 win over Pete Ingram's deck. There was so much Thanks. patience with that lightning strike. He's had that the entire time. Yeah, that was he, excellent. He didn't kill the wild growth walker on sight. He was just waiting. Yeah. Oh my well, God. if there that wasn't, was... I love it because if there wasn't Jade Light Ranger, then he would just send the wild, send it upstairs.